good morning everyone today is to make you think about why language diversity is something that we should all care about india when it became a republic in 1950 26 january india adopted a constitution in which 14 languages were included under the eighth schedule 14 languages with official status four years later the sahitya academy the national academy of letters was established with the specific purpose of promoting literatures in all these 14 different languages so the moral of the story is very simple in india plurality is not seen as a threat in fact plurality is seen as a strength and diversity is promoted not suppressed but that's history what about today where are we in terms of language diversity in india i just want to raise two or three questions one how many languages does india have yeah and how many have we lost and what can we do to save languages from dying and why should we care these are the questions that i hope to raise and hope to make you think about these questions i'll try and answer these one by one let me just give you a glimpse of the language diversity in india as i said we have when the constitution was adopted in 1950 we had 14 languages included in the eighth schedule after that the list kept increasing and today we have 22 languages and please remember that there are another 42 or 41 which are demanding to be included in the eighth schedule and then we have you know there is a general perception that the constitution prescribes hindi as a national language it doesn't nowhere in the constitution is there a mention of any national language all of them are called official languages including hindi which is the official language of the union of india and english is called the subsidiary official language of india but interestingly english is the subsidiary official language of india but it is not in the eighth schedule of the constitution and then we have as i said the sahitya academy which gives annual prizes in 24 languages so on the one hand the constitution recognizes 22 as official languages the national academy of letters gives prizes literary prizes every year in 24 languages that is those 22 languages which are in the eighth eighth schedule english plus rajasthani so 24 languages are recognized by the uh, sahitya academy and as you all know when india became independent in 1947 officially there were 565 you know uh, states uh, king, king kingdoms and these 565 later in 1956 there was a major reorganization of the boundaries and territories and the entire map of india was reorganized in terms of states and these states were formed on the basis of language boundaries and that's why they were called linguistic states right and when it was um, originally um, reorganized india had as i said here <clears throat> uh 14 states and 5 union territories but today in 19, in 2014 we have the 
29th state and there are now seven union and territories. So what does it tell us? You, are, you have 22 languages recognized as official languages in the constitution, 24 languages recognized by Sahitya Academy and there are 29 states which are supposed to be linguistic states. So ultimately how many languages have official status because it, it, what it really means is that there are more languages than the official languages which are included in the constitution because there it is only 22 and we have 29 states. But what is also interesting is that there are any number of languages in the official list which do not have a state of their own. For example, English is a good example. English is supposed to be the subsidiary official language of India, but it is not listed under the 8th schedule. So there are languages without states and there are more states than languages. So the, the linguistic map of India is a very dynamic and very, I would, I would say very sometimes to outsiders, it is a very confusing picture. But what I am trying to show you here is that let us look at the official census reports. The latest census report that is available with us is the 2011 census report. Interestingly, the 2000 census results were released seven years after the survey. They were released very recently last month in 2018. And according to this census report, India is supposed to have 1369 mother tongues. Somebody said 22 languages. Now look at this figure. The census report says that India has 1369 mother tongues. Now this number has to be seen in the context of an earlier census report. The, the most important census report, a landmark in the study of uh, India's linguistic diversity is the census report of 1961 because the 1961 census for the first time listed the names of 1652 mother tongues, 1652 mother tongues which were later after eliminating uh, duplications etc which was later reduced to 1100. But what is interesting is that after the 1961 census, the government of India took a very strange decision and the decision is that any language which has less than 10,000 speakers will not be named in the census report, which means all those speakers, all those speakers of languages which have less than 10,000 speakers, their language will not be mentioned at all. And all these languages will be simply categorized under a label called others. And as a result, in 1971, 10 years after this landmark census report, in 1971, the census report only says India has 108 languages. Look at the contrast, 1652 mother tongues in 1961. 10 years later, the figure comes down to 108 languages. So what happened to the remaining 1000 languages? And those were all simply, you know, categorized under others, which means the speakers of those languages do not have official status anymore. So in a way, the, these nearly 1000 languages suddenly become non-citizens in the republic of languages that India has always been. But a language cannot be preserved without preserving the people who speak it. And you cannot preserve a language without preserving the worldview, right, in which uh, the, the, the language uh, consists of. 
let me just give you one example of how a language is not just a means of communication it's a carrier of culture it carrier it is it is a carrier of the values of a society and it is a carrier of the world view of that society so different languages not only have different vocabularies but there are different vocabularies precisely because there are different value systems and there are different world views so every language is a repository of hundreds of years of heritage but at the same time it also has built into itself the world view which is unique to a particular speech community so in order to preserve this linguistic diversity the people's linguistic survey of india launched a survey in 2010 and in the next 4 years by 2014 the survey was done but remember the survey was done in 4 years but the preparatory work took 17 years and the results of these 21 years of hard work are now coming out it runs into something like 35000 pages and it is coming out in 50 volumes containing 72 books i'll just give you a you know glimpse of that uh, the P plsi volumes there are 50 volumes like this and these 50 volumes cover the scheduled languages the 22 languages the state languages the coastal languages the nomadic languages the tribal languages sign languages so it covers the whole range of the linguistic diversity which is still available in india but as i said india has already lost if you count from 1961 india has already lost 250 languages and imagine what we have lost in those 250 languages because each language you know consists of comprises probably the heritage the intangible heritage as the un says of thousands of years and we have already lost 250 such languages so obviously linguistic diversity is seen as something which can move people very emotionally and people's linguistic survey of india in its 21 years of hard work discovered some very interesting facts and i'm going to end with those facts what did the plsi find out the plsi survey please remember what i said that the plsi survey consists of 3500 people of all kinds of people specialists linguists activists you know social workers volunteers but most importantly members of the speech community and the plsi says very clearly that whenever a community says that this is my language it should be recognized as a language right so the people have a right to give an identity to their own language it's that's why please remember it's called people's linguistic survey of india and not linguist survey of india right so the plsi found that today even today india has a rich linguistic diversity we have about 780 languages were identified by plsi assuming that plsi has missed out another 100 languages we can still say that india has about 880 languages what is also interesting is that the plsi found that the northeastern part of india which is often described as backward less developed etc has one of the uh, you know has the highest percentage of linguistic density in the world the northeastern part of india you know you know uh, arunachal pradesh for example 
you know, gave the result that it has 90 languages. So, in terms of linguistic density, the northeastern part of India is one of the richest. Although we very often dismiss it as backward or underdeveloped. Similarly, the state with the largest number of scripts, you know, was West Bengal with nine different scripts. And so, PLSI is something which is historic and it is probably the biggest, the largest survey of languages anywhere in the world, right? But it is not the first one. The very first linguistic survey of India was done by an Irishman called Grierson, who in about 30 years of his work, he uh, conducted the first linguistic survey of India. And that is about 100 years ago, you know, he did that work between uh, 1898 to 1928. And in his 30 years of work, he found that India had 179 languages and 544 dialects. This was 100 years ago. After independence, the Indian government started two other linguistic surveys. The first one was in 1984, 1984 and it is still going on and even today after so many years less than or around 40 percent of work has been completed. A project that was launched in 1984 still has managed to complete only 40 percent of the work. Second survey which was launched in 2007 and 8, it was launched with a lot of fanfare and it was launched with a huge budget, if I remember right, something like 280 crore budget, 280 crore budget. And that survey, you know, was called the New Linguistic Survey of India, you know, compared to the Linguistic Survey of India of Grierson. And this 200, 2007 and 8 uh, survey was quietly, you know, abandoned in 2010. Nobody knows, you know, what happened to that survey and that whole huge budget that was allotted to us, the work did not even start and quietly, you know, it was given up. So, even today, Grierson's sur Linguistic Survey of India remains the only comprehensive survey, Linguistic Survey of India in the last 100 years till PLSI took up this work and completed it in by 2014 in four years. And what is more important is that PLSI does not claim to be a substitute or a supplement or a continuation of Grierson's Linguistic Survey of India. What PLSI is claiming is that it is claiming to be a survey based on people's perception of language. And what is more remarkable is that this entire PLSI project has received no government support. It is all done without any government su support. Once again, it proves, you know, what has been wisely said. Jo Asarkari hota hai, wahi asarkari hota hai. Do you understand that? Jo asarkari hota hai, wahi asarkari hota hai. So, PLSI probably has succeeded not in spite of, but probably because no government support was given to it. Thank you very much.